Did you know that some of our favorite foods, like cheese, bread, and yogurt, actually owe their taste and texture to billions of tiny living organisms? Yes, microbes. They're not just creepy crawlies under a microscope. They're the secret to the mouth-watering flavors we love. But here's the big question. Are we harnessing their full potential, or are we missing out on something huge? Stick around because, by the end of this video, you'll discover a simple trick to get perfect results every time you ferment foods at home. Trust me, you'll never look at a loaf of sordo the same way again. Let me take you back in time, way back, thousands of years, long before refrigerators, supermarkets, or packaged foods. Our ancestors discovered a magical process where food transformed into something tangy, effervescent, even intoxicating. They didn't know it at the time, but this magic was fermentation, a process powered by microorganisms like bacteria, yeast, and mold. Picture it. You're in an ancient village, and someone leaves a bowl of grains soaking a bit too long. Next thing you know, it starts to bubble. It smells interesting, and voila. You've got the beginnings of a sour, delicious dough. Those early humans didn't understand the science, but they knew one thing. This was good. Today, we know why it's so good. Microbes break down sugars, producing acids, gases, and sometimes alcohol, all of which not only tantalize our taste buds, but also help preserve food. But here's something even more fascinating. Fermentation can also release vitamins, boost gut health, and change flavors in ways that our ancestors could only marvel at. First up on our microbial superstar list, lactic acid bacteria, or LAB for short. These include friends like lactobacillus and streptococcus. When these bacteria get busy in foods like yogurt, kimchi, or sauerkraut, they convert sugars into lactic acid. That acid lowers the pH, creating an environment where bad bacteria can't survive. That's why tangy yogurt lasts longer and why crisp, sour pickles can sit in your fridge without going bad. Then we have yeast, particularly the rock star Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Yeast loves sugar so much that it converts it into carbon dioxide, the bubbles that make bread rise, and alcohol, the key to beer and wine. This alcoholic or acidic environment is yet another defense mechanism against spoilage. And if you think about it, it's brilliant. The microbes that help you make wine are also ensuring no other microbes crash the party. Let's dive deeper into dairy. If you're a cheese lover, Penicillium camemberti is the mold behind those soft, decadent cheeses like Brie and Camembert. Meanwhile, hard cheeses like cheddar often rely on lactic acid bacteria for an initial fermentation before being aged with more specialized microbes for extra oomph and flavor. And when it comes to yogurt, it's all about Streptococcus thermophilus and Lactobacillus delbruchii subsp. Bulgaricus devouring lactose, releasing tangy lactic acid and thickening the milk into a creamy dream. Next up, bread. If you've ever baked bread at home and watched the dough rise, that's Saccharomyces cerevisiae in action. The yeast gobbles up sugars and spews out carbon dioxide, making your dough puff up like a pillow. For sordo, you've got a whole community of wild yeast and lactic acid bacteria living in the starter. It's a beautiful, harmonious dance. The yeast brings the rise. The bacteria bring the tang. That's why a good sordo tastes so distinct. From a crisp lager to a bottle of fine wine, Beverages are also microbe territory. Beer usually starts with grains that are mashed to release fermentable sugars. Then yeast turns those sugars into alcohol and CO2. Wine is all about yeast meeting grape juice. And for kombucha, there's a wild party of bacteria and yeast in what's called a SCO boy, symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, fermenting sweetened tea into a fizzy, tangy drink. Sauerkraut and kimchi. It's all about lactic acid bacteria working their magic on cabbage. Pickles, same story, different vegetable. The result, fresh produce that lasts longer, gets a flavor upgrade, and may even gain extra health benefits. Fermentation goes global. In Japan, 
Fermented soybeans become miso, adding that umami punch to soups and sauces. Then there's tempeh, an Indonesian favorite where soybeans are fermented with mold. Yes, mold. To create a protein-packed, nutty-flavored block of deliciousness. And natto, another Japanese delicacy, is notorious for its sticky texture and strong aroma, but it's revered for its potential health benefits. Even your morning coffee and chocolate bar got their start with fermentation. Coffee beans ferment in water to remove the sticky fruit coating before they're dried and roasted. Meanwhile, cacao beans for chocolate spend a few days fermenting in large heaps or boxes, developing the complex flavors we adore in chocolate. Wild, right? Some of our most luxurious flavors come from microbial action. So, we know fermented foods taste amazing but they can also help break down complex carbs and proteins, making nutrients more available. It's like giving your digestive system a helping hand. Plus, some fermented foods are naturally rich in probiotics, beneficial bacteria that may help balance your gut microbiome. Think kefir, kimchi, and certain yogurts. These tiny microbes can give your gut a gentle nudge toward better health, though of course, individual results may vary. And let's not forget the practical part. Fermenting food extends its shelf life. That was a huge deal for our ancestors who needed to store surplus harvest for months. Even today, it's a brilliant way to reduce food waste. Now, I know what you're thinking. Can I just throw some veggies in a jar and hope for the best? Well, sort of, but you must be careful. Pathogens like salmonella, or E. coli thrive if you don't keep things clean and properly salted or acidified. This is why traditional ferments often involve adding salt for pickles and sauerkraut or carefully controlling temperature for yogurt and cheese. Proper fermentation fosters beneficial microbes and suppresses the bad guys. As technology advances, we're discovering new ways to tweak fermentation. Everything from selecting specialized starter cultures to using genetic engineering for targeted flavor profiles or improved nutritional content. Imagine a future where your personalized cheese is fermented by a microbe designed just for your taste preferences. It's closer than you might think. And let's not forget sustainability. Fermentation can transform food waste or surplus crops into nutritious new products helping us move toward a more circular economy. The possibilities are boundless and extremely exciting. Before I reveal the number one trick to help you ferment with success every single time, do me a favor. If you found this video helpful or eye-opening, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the notification bell. It really supports this channel and ensures you never miss out on our exciting food and science stories. And if you've got questions or experiences to share, drop them in the comments. I love hearing your stories. Maybe you're a kimchi connoisseur or a sordo fanatic. Let's learn from each other. All right, here it is. The golden rule of home fermentation. Keep your environment stable. Fermentation is all about balance, temperature, pH, and time. Most ferment-friendly microbes love temperatures between 20 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep it too cool, and fermentation slows to a crawl. Too warm, and unwanted bacteria or molds might sneak in. Using the right amount of salt, for veggies, or a proper starter culture, for dairy or bread, also helps. Trust me. Once you nail that perfect environment, you'll get consistent, delicious, and safe results every single time. Microbes may be invisible to the naked eye, but their impact on our plate is massive. From the tangy zing of yogurt to the addictive crunch of kimchi, these tiny helpers offer flavor, health benefits, and a window into the wonder of nature's chemistry. If you're ready to continue this journey with me and learn more about how microbes can transform our food, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and share it with your fellow foodies. And remember, the comment section is your stage. Let me know which fermented food you cannot live without.